Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science, your weekly source for the latest science news. In the headlines this week, another fossil is found to belong to the mysterious extinct Denisovan humans, a planet 124 light years away shows the strongest evidence yet for alien life, we have an update on the claims about direwolves being resurrected and much more. If you haven't already seen our chaotic unboxing of the Spring Curiosity Box, check out our Dragon from Hell video to see some serious science and a little geographical confusion too. Brass, aluminum and steel. Okay, and it's this, is, aluminum. this is zinc. Oh, no, it's aluminium. It's not aluminium, it's yeah, aluminium. Okay, just having an argument with yourself. We're British. <laughs> Look Our top story this week is the incredibly exciting news that another fossil bone belonging to the mysterious Denisovan humans has been discovered. Denisovans are a species of extinct human that were most closely related to the Neanderthals and our own species actually interbred with them a few times in the past. The Denisovans were only recognised as something new back in 2010 after DNA from some fragmentary bones unearthed in the Denisova cave in South Siberia showed that they came from an unknown prehistoric human. Since then, a few more fossil remains of potential Denisovans have been reported, but this is the first fossil evidence of these people in the warmer and more humid parts of East Asia. The specimen is a mandible that comes from a male individual, and it was found in the 2000s after being dredged up from the sea off the coast of Taiwan during a commercial fishing operation. The specimen had been named Pengu-1 and had been given an age of around 190,000 to 10,000 years old. Genomic studies suggest Denisovans were widespread throughout Asia and Oceania, as many modern human populations carry the genetic legacy of ancient interbreeding events in their DNA. However, confirmed fossil evidence of Denisovans is extremely limited. Outside Denisova Cave, confirmed Denisovan fossils have so far only been found from a single site on the Tibetan Plateau, although some other specimens from China and Laos have been suggested to be Denisovan too. This reanalysis of the specimen from Taiwan is extraordinary as it provides direct evidence that Denisovans occupied these more southeastern geographical ranges. The researchers extracted ancient proteins from the bone and dental enamel of the specimen, retrieving over 4,000 amino acid residues, two variants of which are Denisovan specific. These residues, coupled with anatomical analysis of the wide jaw and large molars, similar to the Tibetan specimen, confirmed it to be a Denisovan. This new research has revealed crucial evidence of the Denisovan specific molecular signatures, adding to our database of possible Denisovan specimens and allowing us to better characterise the anatomy and distribution of this elusive group of ancient hominins. Next up, more news about ancient humans as an article published in the journal Nature has pushed back the date of occupation of Malta by a thousand years. The island of Malta, one of the most isolated islands in the Mediterranean, was thought to have been first occupied by the people of mainland Europe around 7,500 years ago. But evidence found in a sinkhole at the north of the island suggests an earlier date. Traces of human habitation were uncovered over three years of excavation, including 64 stone tools, animal remains presenting signs of butchery, and ash from hearths. Radiocarbon dating of the charcoal remains suggests the island was occupied as early as 8,500 years ago, and that the hunter-gatherers of the time were likely skilled seafarers, as at least 100 kilometres of open ocean would have to be crossed to reach the island. This new research challenges the view that Stone Age hunter-gatherers could not routinely and intentionally cross large bodies of water, and suggests instead that they were skilled seafarers. The researchers point out that earlier instances of long sea journeys were likely singular instances, but recent genetic data of an 8,000-year-old individual from Tunisia suggests an ancestry possibly from Malta. So these journeys between Mediterranean islands could have been a more frequent occurrence. What a brilliant discovery. 
Also in the news this week, a new species of giant prehistoric tortoise has been discovered. It was uncovered in Argentina in rocks dating to the late Pleistocene, sometime around 20,000 years ago or younger, and it's known from a partial plastron fossil, the plastron being the name for the underside of the shell. It's been recognised as a member of the still-living tortoise genus Kelonoidus, which includes the famous giant Galapagos species, and so it's been named Kelonoidus pucara. This extinct tortoise had a particularly large and thick shell, and the carapace would probably have measured some 1.7 to 1.8 metres long. That's about 5.6 to 5.9 feet. It's been termed a super gigantic tortoise, and would have dwarfed modern Galapagos tortoises. Its discovery is especially interesting considering that its gigantic size has convergently evolved multiple independent times within tortoises. So the new species is yet another record of this trait evolving among these reptiles. The paleontologists who describe the species also speculate on the behaviour of the supergiant tortoise, noting that the very thick spurs at the front of the plastron might indicate that males would have engaged in violent shoving matches with each other, as some modern species do. A brilliant new fossil find. We have a quick update on the direwolf resurrection story next, as the unpeer-reviewed preprint of the genetic study undertaken by Colossal Biosciences has been released online. As we discussed last week, the US biotech company claims to have revived the direwolf after it went extinct more than 10,000 years ago. However, this has sparked a great deal of criticism from scientists, as what they have really done is edit the genome of a modern grey wolf to produce a slightly larger wolf with a white coat, meaning these are absolutely not direwolves. Bizarrely, among the co-authors on this new genetics preprint is none other than George R. R. Martin, who apparently is an investor and cultural advisor for Colossal Biosciences. The study has examined the paleogenomes from two well-preserved direwolf specimens, and calculated a revised divergence time for this species from other dogs of around 4.5 million years ago. In addition, and this is the particularly interesting bit, they show that the direwolf was, in fact, the result of hybridisation between members of two separate dog lineages. One was the wolf coyote plus dole group, which contributed to 61% of the ancestry, and the other was the group containing the South American canids, such as the maned wolf, which contributed to 39%. So, in summary, their results seem to indicate that the dog evolutionary tree is far more complex than had been appreciated, finding that a previously unrecognised hybridisation event gave rise to the dire wolf lineage. However, it also serves to prove that they are undeniably incorrect when they claim to have revived the dire wolf. Editing a few genes in a modern grey wolf will never produce this species, and this study highlights the complex genetics and hybridising that went into the origins of the dire wolf lineage, as well as confirming the ancient date of their divergence from other canids. This means their own study is essentially a massive contradiction of their claims that an edited grey wolf is the same thing as a dire wolf. Again, we should also stress that this is not a peer-reviewed study, so we'll have to see what other scientists who are not part of Colossal make of it. There's more genetics news this week, as researchers have made a fantastic achievement, the successful sequencing of the complete genomes from six different ape species. Scientists have been working towards sequencing ape genomes for almost 25 years, ever since the human genome was completely sequenced in 2001. The entire genomes of the chimpanzee, bonobo, gorilla, Bornean orangutan, Sumatran orangutan, and the siamang, a species of gibbon, have all been decoded. This landmark study is the first time that the complete genetic sequences of these animals have been deciphered, rather than just segments of them. Ape genomes are of particular interest, as they can provide insight into our own evolutionary history, as well as the genetic components of what makes us different to other primates. And so this new research will act as a baseline for future studies on human evolution. In addition, having the complete genomes of these species is particularly important for conservation efforts, considering that all six of these species are either endangered or critically endangered. So, with the full genomes now known, conservationists will be able to better assess their genetic diversity and identify particular populations that need to be preserved. It's truly an incredible achievement with so many exciting applications. 
In other news, we have the insanely exciting discovery of a possible biosignature from outside our solar system in what's being dubbed the strongest signs for life outside our solar system yet discovered. Using observations made by the James Webb Space Telescope, researchers have detected the presence of dimethyl sulfide and or dimethyl disulfide in the atmosphere of the planet K218b. This exoplanet is significantly larger than Earth and 124 light years away and is in a habitable zone for its star, which is the distance from a star where liquid water is able to exist on the surface. The significance of the chemicals found on this planet is that they are only produced, on Earth at least, by life, mostly microorganisms like phytoplankton. Of course, it could be possible that there is some kind of unknown process happening in K218b's atmosphere that creates these chemicals. But, so far, the most likely possibility for their creation is indeed the presence of life on the planet. This is not yet a sure discovery, however, and the researchers say that a long 16 to 24 hour period on the James Webb Space Telescope could help them reach the commonly accepted Five Sigma scientific classification for a new discovery. So this could be the most exciting news of the millennia, but we'll just have to wait and see. In other news, a study published in the Astrophysical Journal has revisited an observation made at the Palomar Observatory that astronomers thought was a planet being consumed by a red giant stage dying star. A particularly bright flash was observed at this star, which is about 12,000 light years away, but upon further observations by the James Webb Space Telescope, astronomers now believe that the star is too young to be in its red giant phase and could not have expanded and consumed its planet like previously believed. Instead, the researchers now think that a massive Jupiter-sized planet was orbiting this star at an incredibly close distance, about the same distance as Mercury orbits our own star. Over a rather long period of time, the planet's orbit got closer and closer to its host star, eventually falling into it and causing the flash that had been observed earlier. This isn't a done deal final conclusion, however, and while they have ruled out the original proposal of what happened, there still needs to be further research done to say for sure what happened. Also in the news, we have an update on the whaling situation in Iceland. Last December, we reported that the Icelandic government had issued a five-year permit to two whaling companies, which allowed them to kill up to 209 fin whales and 217 minke whales each year. One of the whaling companies has not hunted since 2020, and we are pleased to report that the largest whaling company has now also decided not to hunt this year. The whaling season typically runs from mid-June to September, and Japan is the main buyer of whale meat. However, the price of whale meat is now so low that it is no longer economically viable to sell it to them. So the fin and minke whales are safe, at least for this year. And in other great conservation news this week, a rehabilitation facility for pangolins has opened in South Africa's Lapalala Wilderness Reserve. There are eight species of pangolin found across Africa and Asia. Sadly, these amazing creatures are hunted for their scales and meat. They are considered to be the most trafficked mammals in the world. They are elusive animals, being nocturnal and very shy, and there is still a lot that is not known about them. The new centre will be a haven where the rescued pangolins can heal before they are released back into the wild, where they will be monitored. The facility, known as the Pangolarium, will also be a research and conservation hub for pangolin academics, rehabilitators and veterinarians to share information and knowledge about these adorable creatures. Well, that's it for the news this week. I really hope you enjoyed learning about everything that's happened in the last seven days of science. You can follow Seven Days of Science on Instagram and TikTok, and also be sure to support us on Patreon if you enjoy what we do here. This Sunday, we're gonna put up one of our Patreon monthly discussion things, so that'll be fun. As always, a big thank you to our patrons, including Andrew Cowam, Clara Middleton, Dean A. Bather, Diana Hernandez, Drav Srivastava, Gabriella, Gary Arrington, Giotist, John French, Joseph Ree, Corey Peterson, Lena Rose, Matt Grandis, Mendicant Fryer, Mike Pace, Monitor Man, Ralph Balzac, Robert Prieprazika Jr., Robert Thomas, Sammy Voss, Schlom, Staniforth Hopkins, Steve Bradshaw, Thomas F. Conroy III, Timothy N. Tedrow, and Troy Schmidt. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.